Hi all, I am Pragya Shrivastava, an educator on Unacademy. Follow me on Unacademy Learning app where you will find my many more courses. And in this lesson, we will be studying about Muirhoff's bearing capacity theory. And uh, we will try to solve some problems based on the bearing capacity. Mirhoff extended the analysis of plastic equilibrium of a surface footing to shallow and deep foundation. This is your shallow foundation and this one is your deep foundation. And to show the failure mechanism uh, on shallow and deep foundation by both Terjagi and Mirhoff, uh, is what I have drawn here. In a sa same diagram, I have drawn on the left hand side the failure zone by Tejagi, and this is the failure zone as given by Mirhoff, so that you can easily uh, see the differences between them. And we have already started about Tejagi's theory in our previous lesson, and in this lesson, uh, let's see. The Mirhoff's theory. Mirhoff, he has actually what he has done. He also assumed this is your suppose this is your footing, uh, ground level below which you can see the footing here, and B is the width, and uh, DF is the depth of the footing. This is the on application of a vertical load from here. This is your failure wedge which is actually formed here which was similar to that in Tejagi. Tejagi also assumed this one and he called this as an elastic zone. Here it is also called elastic zone. But in Meerhoff's theory uh, what you see that the shear, radial shear zone actually extends up to BDE. This is your radial shear zone and uh, while that in Tejagi you can see the radial shear zone extended up to only this much and uh, about this zone he assumed Merhoff actually assumed this uh, BDEF sorry BEFG BEFG this zone is the zone of mixed shear in which shear varies between radial and plane shear depending largely upon the depth and roughness of the foundation. The plastic equilibrium of these zones can be established from boundary conditions starting from foundation shaft. To simplify the analysis, Meerhoff introduced a term beta. Beta, what is beta? Beta is actually the inclination of this, uh, this line BF, we are going to refer this line as equivalent free surface on which you can see the stresses P0 and S0, the shear stresses and the normal stresses are acting and this angle beta is actually the inclination of this equivalent free surface from the base of the footing and uh, in case of deep foundation what you can see that the angle beta actually increases with depth and becomes 90 degree in case of deep foundation the mirror of equation what we see that it actually takes into account the shape factor, depth factor and inclination factor. So, Meerhoff's equation is actually more close to the actual loading conditions. He gave that the vertical load is actually equal to QF is equal to CNC, SCDC plus sigma bar. NQ, SQ, DQ 
प्लस जीरो पॉइंट फाइव गामा बी एन गामा एस गामा डी गामा दिस इज योर शेप फैक्टर एंड दिस इज योर डेप्थ फैक्टर एंड द वट इंक्लाइन लोड क्यू एफ इज एक्चुअली इक्वल टू सी एन सी डी सी आई सी प्लस सिग्मा बार एन क्यू डी क्यू आई क्यू प्लस जीरो पॉइंट फाइव गामा बी एन गामा एस गामा डी गामा वॉट इज दिस डी सी एंड आई सी डी सी बींग डेप्थ फैक्टर एंड आई सी इज योर इंक्लीनेशन फैक्टर एंड ही गेव दिस कॉन्स्टेंट्स द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस कॉन्स्टेंट्स एन क्यू एन सी एन गामा एस एन क्यू इज इक्वल टू ई रेस टू पा पाई टेन फाइव मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टेन स्क्वायर फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री प्लस फाइव बाई टू एन सी इज एक्चुअली इक्वल टू एन क्यू माइनस वन कॉट फाइव एंड एन गामा इज इक्वल टू एन क्यू माइनस वन दैन वन पॉइंट फोर फाइव एंड यू कैन दीज वैल्यूज आर एक्चुअली कैलकुलेटेड फॉर डिफरेंट वैल्यूज ऑफ फाइव एंड इज अवेलेबल इन ए टेबल ऑफ फॉर्म फ्रॉम वे यू कैन डायरेक्टली गेट योर वैल्यूज एंड यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दिस फॉर्म दे आर वेरी सिंपल टू रिमेंबर just to the te te chhag is there you need to multiply scdc sqdq and s gamma d gamma and therefore incline loading dcic dqiq and s gamma d gamma this is what you need to remember rest of these things are generally provided from the table now let's try to solve a problem based on the bearing capacity and this problem actually says that there is square footing 2.5 cross 2.5 meter and is built in a homogeneous uh, bed of sand uh, of unit weight 20 kN per meter cube and having an angle of shearing resistance of 36 degrees the depth of the base of footing is 1.5 meter below ground level you need to calculate the safe load that can be carried by a factor uh, by the footing having factor of safety equal to 3 against complete shear failure if when factor of safety is not mentioned in your problem then also you need to remember to introduce a factor of safety of 3 and uh, here it is mentioned that you need to use uh, tejagi's analysis so let's see what is given the first thing that i can see is that it is mentioned that the shearing res resistance is actually equal to 36 degrees what does this imply this implies that the failure is going to occur in by general shear failure and from that what we can uh, find out from the table we can find out the value of nc and k and n gamma Uh, with the given value of phi under general shear failure conditions now what more is given here the size of the footing is given 2.5 cross 2.5 that means area is known gamma is known gamma of sand 20 kN per meter square and the depth df is 1.5 meter below gl now from table we can directly get the value of nc nq and gamma which i have written here and we know the value of b d and gamma it is given in the problem now just directly i apply the tejagi's equation for square footing and it actually says i hope you remember that ultimate bearing capacity q u is actually equal to 1.2 cnc plus gamma df and q Plus zero point four gamma b and gamma. You need to remember these equations. Now, be, being a c is not mentioned, that means uh, your um, sand is actually cohesionless. Assuming this to be equal to zero, and putting the values of gamma twenty df one point five nq forty nine point four, and uh, Put the, put all the values here. Plus zero point five four gamma is twenty. B is given to be two point five, and n gamma is fifty four. Put the values, multiply it. You get twenty five sixty two kilonewton per, per meter square. Then Q U. You you have found out Q U, 
and uh, so you can find out the net ultimate burn capacity by subtracting the overburden pressure from it. So net ultimate burn capacity is actually equal to QU minus gamma DF. You need to remember these things. We have already learnt in your previous lessons and put the value gamma df is 20 into 1.5 subtract you'll get 2532 kN per meter square. Now what again by getting the net ultimate actually we need to find out the safe bearing capacity. Net safe bearing capacity how you, how you can be you can find out this by dividing the net ultimate giving a factor of safety of 3 you can find out the safe bearing capacity. You always need to provide a factor of safety for our de design purpose. So dividing this by factor of safety 3, we get the net safe bearing capacity to be equal to 844 kilonewton per meter square. From here, you can now find, you will have to find out the safe bearing capacity QS by adding the overburden pressure so that you can find out the maximum safe load. So your safe bearing capacity comes out to be at the overburden pressure of 20 across 1.5. You get your value as 874 kN per meter square. Therefore, the maximum safe load that the soil can actually carry is B square cross Q safe. So put the values, the value of B square area 2.5 cross 2.5 multiplied by 874 and you get your answer. So though the question seems to be very simple and with all the values given but you need to remember all these formulas and the different relations. That's why actually I have taken this example so that you should know that you need to understand the terms and learn it very prop very clearly so that you can find out the maximum safe flow. Not a very difficult question, easy to solve. Just need to remember the formulas and have a good understanding of the chapter go through the chap go through the lesson and uh, try to remember the formulas until meanwhile take care